months ago, a group of people started planning this exhibit. And among those was this, uh, the president of the Onyx Board, Mr. Ernest Thomas. And Mr. Thomas, as we were exploring the subject and the topic of this exhibit, said, truth be told. And we all looked at each other and said, truth be told. So now the question is, what does that mean? And what did that mean to all the artists who participated in this exhibit? So I want to start out by asking Mr. Thomas himself, and there's a mic right over here, if you would just pass it over to him. What were you thinking when you said truth be told? Well, you know, historically, well, some might, some might not know that uh, world history is, is all over the map, and it seems to continue to spin the question. You know, you look at one writing, one writing will say something, you look at another writing, and I'm talking about writings like in, when they first started writing, <laughs> and, 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 and they're, they're saying something totally opposite. They're saying opposite stuff. So I think the same is true with visual art. You know, a lot of these galleries will take your, your artwork. Oh, let me go back. So there was a, uh, an exhibit at the CL Art Museum of uh, the work of Picasso. And, um, uh, and of course there, when you, you go there, attending an exhibit, they'll oftentimes give you a little recorder and you can walk around and uh, the, the painting will have a number on it. You push that number and you can learn more about the painting. Well, in this particular case, here was a Picasso piece, very nice piece, and a number. And you push the button and uh, the, the narration says, well, this is an example of Picasso's view of kissing a woman up close. And I, I stepped back and I said, you know, that's a pure copy of a Songi mask from West Africa. He just took a close-up picture of it. I mean, one to one. <laughs> so, so what in fact is the truth? That gets spun and it gets learned and all of a sudden you don't have the truth. So the example here was to bring something among us, you know, where we're telling our own story, the artists are telling their own story, they can be in the space, they can explain to you what they meant, it ain't gonna change. You know, that is in fact what was meant. The truth is being told. And um, so that was you know, what I had in mind. <laughs> so, and, truth and, of the matter. And, truth yeah, of the matter. The truth of the matter. And, and it's interesting because here we are now, eight months further along, not knowing the truth was actually going to be part of our national conversation, right? That the truth is a topic that we're talking about a lot these days. Uh, what is the truth and, and who's telling it and what does that mean? Um, I wanted to. Um, ask Jay Taylor, who um, has a, a, a it, it's a, has a couple, of, has several pieces up in the exhibit, some of which are photographs, and some of which, and one of which, the, the actual second place winner in this exhibit, is a watercolor. And what I was wondering, Jay, was what made you decide what medium to tell the story, and I, I'm not an artist. We all know that Lola is not a visual artist. But when I look at art, I see it as a conversation between me and the artist, that the artist, by whatever they've done, is trying to tell me something. And so what I wonder about is, for those of you who work in different media, how do you decide what you're going to tell me in what media. Does that make sense as a question? So, Jay? Well, I don't know if I can really answer that, but I'll give it a shot. Uh, I'm, I work primarily as a photographer and with uh, images. Uh, 
but my my background and my in my profession as an architect, you know, in my training, uh, early college days, yeah, I went to art. We studied art history, and you know, we took lots of art, and I did a little bit of painting, watercolor in college, uh, you know, thirty some odd years ago. Um, and I just started getting back into sketching and drawing last year, and uh, you know, I attended a few exhibits. Over the summer, and one of which really struck me was Paul Rucker's exhibit uh, here in Seattle called Rewind, and uh, you know it, it dealt with uh, social justice issues. And in my photography medium, you know, lately I've been over the last couple of years I've been trying to move more towards an artistic type of photography, and uh, so I've been. Combining photography with other mediums uh, digitally. Um, when I heard about the the theme for this show, uh, Truth Be Told, uh, it kind of struck a chord with you know the exhibit I had seen by Paul Rucker, and uh, I just uh, I was you know really inspired by that as well as uh, a report that I had read online which I've linked uh, part of that painting to uh, by the Equal Justice Initiative program on uh, lynching in America. And uh, so when I heard about the show theme, I, I thought, well, you know, I had been thinking about doing something about lynching, and you know, I just didn't know exactly know what. Uh, I didn't want it to be like to do something with a photograph I had saw that you know Paul had done some things with photographs uh, uh, of people being lynched. I think he had some printed on uh, fabric, and then uh, I saw Carletta's work before with the letter to a laundress. She had some images from the uh, Library of Congress, and so I, I knew I wanted to I, I, to do something about lynching, but I didn't know exactly what medium I how I wanted to present it. I had. I had an idea in my head, but I, I, I thought about initially doing part of it in sculpture uh, with metal on wood. Um, but then uh, I just decided to go ahead and paint it. Uh, I had been taking a couple of uh, watercolor workshops last year with a, a friend of mine who, who's a great watercolorist, and uh, just, I was very inspired by his work. And, uh, my initial thought was to uh, do it on, on wood and then uh, use a wood burner and burn it in, burn part of the image in and then paint over it. Well, the problem was I could only, the type of wood I wanted to use was very limited to a small scale. So uh, well, this would be a perfect opportunity for me to uh, do a painting, which is something I have been threatening on its board members with over the last year and a half or so. I said, well, I'm going to do a painting for one of these shows, one of these shows. And I just never got time really to do it. But uh, when I heard the theme of this show, you know, and uh, along with my idea, I thought, you know, this, this would be the perfect opportunity. And uh, I was a little bit... Uh, a little bit uh, leery of, uh, I haven't, hadn't done anything this big. Uh, actually, I hadn't really showed any watercolor work before, but and, and, uh, my, uh, my watercolor mentor, he suggested, you know, well, why don't you do something, you know, half scale, half size sheet of watercolor to begin with. And so, you know, I did several different comps and uh, experimented a bit, and I just said, well, I'm just gonna go for it. You know, this this is going to be Onyx's biggest show, and uh, you know, the pieces. You know, I don't care if my pieces sell or whatever. I just, you know, I want to uh, make a strong statement in the show, and uh, so I just I just went for it. And uh, you know, I did set quite a few different comps at smaller scale sketches and you know, practice watercolors, but uh, uh, and I finally got time uh, in between jobs uh, to actually uh, sit down and uh, 
really work on the paint. But uh, the watercolor as a medium, uh, it's just really a kind of a magical medium. It's kind of unpredictable. And uh, I tried to emulate it sometimes in my photography, some of the work that I was doing, but I could never really get that, uh, I don't know, that feeling that you get when you see watercolor, the luminescence of watercolor on paper and the reflectance of light coming through that paper is just something that you can't really reproduce uh, digitally on a computer. And, uh, so that was kind of my uh, reasoning for wanting to do watercolor. Thank you. That was great. That was really helpful to understand. For someone like me who's not <clears throat> doesn't understand that language. Uh, so again, going back to, and, and I'm going to keep talking about language because that's my medium, right? I am a writer, therefore language is my medium. Uh, when you are creating a piece, uh, do you know, and, and I'll just go around the room here, and anyone who wants to answer it, answer. Uh, do you know who the who it is you're creating the, the piece for? Um, do you know who, do you have in mind who it is that you're speaking to? Um, I, I, I occasionally heard somebody say, well, that piece just doesn't speak to me. And, and my response is always, maybe it's not meant to. And so my question is, do you, are you intentional about who you're speaking to when you create a piece? Okay, so I'm an artist, and um, <laughs> don't get me started. Uh, I'm an artist, and, and when I paint, I'm speaking to myself. Truth be told, was such a was, was such a dynamic title, I couldn't live up to it like that. Jay did. Okay, I had to paint something that was in my realm of comfortable. Comfortable. <laughs> okay. And so, so it had to be comfortable for me, but it also had to be something that um, that I could relate to. In that, to try to make a statement with my art all the time is 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 complicated and difficult, and, and it would slow me down and set me back. So I did what I felt was my way of painting. It may not have made a statement, but what it did do was get it off of my chest and out of my mind. Subconscious, and it was on. And then the, the the practice of what I do, I paint with a with a palette knife. So I wanted to do something that had an impact with that palette knife that not a lot of people are comfortable with. And 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 what that palette knife does for me is probably not an African American statement. Not very many people paint with a palette knife. It's more of a Renaissance type tool. It's more of a, it, it's a Van Gogh, it's a, uh, and, and those are the kind of guys that speak to me. So that, I'm trying to say that I was, I'm influenced by all of these different kinds, and not necessarily Afrocentric uh, uh, part of me. But I'm getting ready to to, uh, to, uh, to start talking to that, because he won second place. <laughs> okay, so, so, so I'm getting ready to break open and, uh, and make some statements. <laughs> And, and it's interesting that you have the perception that you haven't made a statement because I've heard lots of people talk about your work and the statement it makes for them. So that's an interesting perception. Uh, Andrew? Well, um, sorry, we have two mics.
pieces that I have, pieces that, that I've dreamt about. And, um, I have, and they never come out like I do. Never. Um, but it's a very difficult, to me it's a, it's a scary place to get into painting for an audience. Because I don't think you're true to yourself. This is just my own personal. Um, I, I think it becomes more commercial art than it does fine art. Is when you say, "Oh, this is going to be for this group," or "Oh, you know, they're going to get it." And people never get what you think they're going to get. And people look at you. It could be a little girl on a swing in a field, and they'll come out with something like it's angels or something, you know? So it's, it's and, and that's the beauty of art. I, I think, you know, anytime you're doing music, art, it's so beautiful how people can love it, but they love it for different reasons. So I'm always cognizant of when I paint, I paint the trueness. I'm always going to be really, really honest and authentic. And, and that's not always easy to do. It, you know, you think, I know who I am. But sometimes you don't when you approach a particular subject. You know, you don't really know what it is that's in you when it can shock you when it comes out on the paint. Because, you know, I paint, I, um, I'm a colorist foremost. So, you know, one of my taglines is, without color, why paint? Um, the only reason why I paint is color. If, if I could just live in a world of color, that's where I would be. I would just be swimming in it. So to, to try to get uh, images out of it that, that are true to who I am, um, sometimes it's easy and, and sometimes it's very difficult. Anyone else want to take this on? My name is Julius, and um, actually, I'm not a painter, but um, okay, I'm sorry. So my name is Julius, and um, actually, I'm a friend of Stravon's, and we actually uh, combine and do our work together. So she's the painter, I'm um, more the, um, I ain't gonna say mastermind, but I'm more the glue master. You know, a lot of my pieces I can show you. Um, this one I did, can you go out? So what we did is we decided to come up with a project. I got I I got the mask and I put the jewelry around it. You know, and, um, actually I told Siobhan I want you to paint the mask and um, the um, the um, the hair. You know, it was already cornrow or uh, dreadlocks. So that was our concept. Um, I think. What was really fascinating about this piece was not so much the doing, but how we combine together and how we communicate and how we got the piece done. I, I think that's very important when it comes to art or when it comes to doing jewelry or whatever, is just having a, um, having a peace of mind, the inner peace of, um, well for me, challenging myself. That's what works for me. When I do art, when I do my jewelry, because I make jewelry, I always like challenging myself. Um, I was looking at stuff like this piece right here. There's another piece. Like this is supposed to be me in New York. I'm from New York, so any of you New Yorkers, they, and what, what we did is Siobhan painted, but I wanted to be glowing in the dark. So it actually glows in the dark. So, you know, that's that's what we do. And I come so up. I'm from New York and the South Bronx. Right. Right. Okay. Well, this ain't you. This is this is Harlem. Okay. So, that's only a few blocks. Right. 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 Well, no. But well, really, serious. Um, the whole concept. Um, and to answer your question, man, is um, I when I do my work, I don't do it for people. I do it for myself first, because a lot of times people can be very judgmental about other people's work. And, and you know. My thing is, when I do work, when I do my jewelry or whatever, I do it with feelings. It's how I feel. The way I feel is the way I've been out to work. 
And when I see other people all at work, I kind of get a feel of that person. So when I meet that person, I ask them, how were you, how were you feeling when you did that particular part? Because some people say they be mad, they do all better when they're angry or mad. So that gave me a, um, a perceptive, um, perception of when I do my art, I have to be honest. When I do my jury, I have to be honest. I have to see what head, what head space I'm in. And just keep honest with my audience. And I think that's the biggest thing about this art, just keep being honest with yourself. And then actually, when people see your work, then they can judge for themselves. Because you know, work sees for itself. So. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add that I also, when I'm creating artwork, I'm coming from a place of who I am and what I like, number one, but also um, kind of the larger landscape of being in society and what's going on in society. Um, so the pieces that we created together, like for example this one, Julius kind of had an idea um, and he started it. And um, he was like, okay, you know, he had only got so far, but then he was like, okay, we finish and add some more to it. So when I looked at that piece, okay, I looked at it from a perspective of if I was this person, what, how, how would I look, you know, what would I put on or what would I, colors would I use? Or, um, and then I just add to it from there. And so that's kind of how this particular piece came together. On the pieces that we made for, together for this show, that's usually how it starts, um, with us both coming up with our ideas and putting it together for the final picture. Um, in some of my individual work, it's usually uh, something that I see in my mind before I even start painting, at least the beginning part of it. Um, and it's usually a reflection of something I've read or seen or heard through music or um, just want to see something come to life in a, in a in visual image and once I get started I'll pull all my pieces together and put it within the framework of the picture and then add to it as I go so there's several paintings where I'm like maybe even the day of I may paint it there was one person that wanted to paint it and I worked the whole weekend on this one piece and the day, I'm like literally hours before I was supposed to take that piece, I totally made something else. <laughs> and, and you know, but that piece worked out even better than what I had been working on for two or three days. So um, it's just a matter of feeling and emotion as well. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, just piece right here. I, I, I forgot to I'm telling y'all, it's a hidden mass. All right, but what it does is it represents women that's in recovery, or just women all around the world that you still beautiful if you go to do wear makeup or not. Um, it's all about building your self-esteem. So what I'm doing is I'm just um, encouraging women and men, but mainly women that whatever you go through in life, there's always another chance. And then when you look at all the art over here, the children of God, the child of God, it kind of it represents that. That's that. You know, we all the children of God, but when you get a certain age in life and when you go through things in life, you don't give up on yourself. It's still hope. So with this mask, that's what that, that's what that represents, the, um, the hidden mask. You ain't got to hide behind it anymore. Yeah. So thank you. So, uh, Siobhan, how come my name is the show? Uh, Siobhan Jones. Uh, okay, I'm an abstract artist, I call myself, and uh, it, yesterday a, a woman came into the, into the space and she had a heavy accent, so I'm always curious, I want to know like, where you're from. Well, she turns out to be from Istanbul, Turkey, and uh, 
course, she's speaking in broken English, but I'm, we're understanding each other. And she wanted to see my artwork, so I took her to the, the inside piece, long black one, and she stood, stood there and she said, okay, what I see is, and she was describing everything that I had intended that piece to communicate. And I said, wow, the depth of art, you know, and if you are, if you're coming from a place that's, uh, you, you know, that's deep inside, I, I, it's going to resonate and it's going to communicate to somebody. Yeah, anyway, the truth is being told. <laughs> And can you hear me? Yeah, okay. you're softer than I am, I'm told that I am an emerging artist, so I just tell people that. Um, I discovered art a couple of years ago now, and the pieces that I am showing today, or this during this exhibit, there's about five of them, I actually created all of those last year, because I didn't do anything specific for this show. Um, and I was told that anything pretty much would work. Myself, when I discovered art, it was just by chance on February 14, 2015, hanging out with some ladies doing arts and crafts. It was completely unexpected. And um, out of that, I discovered really that art has become very therapeutic for me. It's a way to release all these emotions and thoughts. And I've had a lot of challenges and loss, and health challenges. And so it gives me a chance to just do something with all that energy that's rolling around in my head. I, and I, I've always wanted to be a writer, but I didn't want to be a starving artist, so I pursued my education and did other things and found my way back to this whole world, and I write poetry as well. Um, and so while I'm painting, because I have all these things going on in my left brain, because I was very left brain before I had all these health challenges, and that left brain is taking over, it wants to dominate, wants to control, and so I, I journal through that process. I have a journal right there with me, and I'm just writing all these thoughts and ideas that come out, and sometimes poetry com you know, comes out of a piece. Um, but really, it's, it's th very therapeutic, and I find that I'm tapping into you know, a lot of strength, you know, inner strength, inner peace, and uh, the, the pieces that are on this side of the room, I'm told that they're very peaceful. In fact, one of them is called Serenity, and I can understand, because when someone really gets your art, and when it speaks to them the way it speaks to you, there's like nothing better than that. And uh, so, so that's kind of that. I do it for myself, and it's very therapeutic. And I like to also challenge people who tell me that they aren't artists. I challenge that because I would say this. I said the same thing, and I just believe that we are all artists in some different way or another. And something really amazing happened to me since this show. There are sometimes where there's things that we don't know about ourselves, and we don't know that we don't know these things, about things in general. And as a result of the show, you know, it was Ashby's piece and also uh, Al's piece um, that spoke to me so, so powerfully that when I left here on opening day, January 8th, I went home and about two o'clock in the morning on January 9th, I woke up, I was, I was awake, but probably another level of consciousness. I got some paper and I just started sketching faces so I've been wanting to do that, but I felt really intimidated, like there's something I can do. People will judge me, because I'm not as good. So I stick to what I'm better at, and that's nature. And since January 9th, I've created probably like 10 or 15 um, pretty good sketches. Like, I've got something there. And so the truth is that, um, you know, I've got an ability and a, more talent than I, than I knew. And so that, that title, I'll never forget it, truth be told, it, it really is powerful. And then the other thing about that I'm so amazed because I'm a new artist, that art can communicate. Wow, really, I never knew that. And anyway, I'm just having a really great time and I feel so blessed to be around um, artists and, and our guests. Um, anyway, thank you. Thanks. So, so, as I listen to each of you talk about your work, um, I know that Again, I'm trying to have a conversation with you through your art. I'm trying to figure out who you are and what you're, what you're about. Why did you create that piece? That's what I'm looking at when I look at your work, is what, what went into that. 
Um, and I love that you're talking about emotion and the expression of emotion. Um, I know as a poet, uh, I let go a long time ago of how people interpret what I write. Uh, I even have a poem about it that, that basically says, once you write it, you have to let it go because folks are going to make it whatever they want to, right? So, but one of the questions I have about visual art is, is there, uh, like, uh, as a, again, as a writer and as a poet, I know that there are certain structural pieces to writing, right? I know that there are nouns and verbs and, and the, that there are actual structural components to creating a sentence. And yes, I can ignore them, I often do, but I know they're there. So what I don't know is when we're talking about visual arts, is there language? Is there, uh, like, does red always mean something? Or does uh, a thin line mean something? I mean, what, what are the pieces, the structural pieces, that would help me to understand your work uh, as you create? You know, I'm informed by things around me. I've, I've never taken an art class in my life. Uh, so, but one thing informs me, you know, just uh, uh, a piece of wood that could have a certain structure that, that tells me you can do something a little bit differently and, and make it somewhat interesting, you know. I mean, a broken piece of tile. So that's the kind of stuff that turns me on. Um, I would have to say that in some of the pieces that I have made, um, I try to use something real in it. So I may start off with a sketch and I paint it. And then after it's done, I'm trying to find something that I can add to it that brings it to life, meaning a real earring, a real hair, or something that will just give it some depth and some realness to it. And partly because I feel that it's more than, the, once I've completed a painting, it's so much more than that. And I look at my paintings as kind of being a book, you know. So, you know, and I, that's really was my first kind of love. Or, well, I would say they go together. I always knew I could draw and do art. But it was always something I either did in my head or I'd say, oh, I'll do it once. I get old and retired and I'm sitting back in my rocking chair and I'm just painting flowers and, or something and whatever is going on at that time, that's what I'll paint. But the, um, I've always enjoyed art and fashion and everything. But um, so once I started making it, I was like, well, I'm just going to combine all those elements together. All the subjects of, that I learned at school that I like and the things that I like to wear, I'm going to combine them all in this painting so it's all right here. And um, to me, that was a way of being a fashion designer, number one, because that's one of my loves, being a writer, because, um, you know, like I said, each one of my paintings, is a, I feel it's a book. So whatever book that I may have 
wanted to write or will write one day, I've already created it in a painting, you know? So, um, and um, it's just a way to, I guess, um, just sum up a whole um, quote or thought or experience in something that's tangible right then and there for somebody to see. Okay, so I have another art piece I want to show y'all. Now this right here, this speaks to me. Now a lot of people love this piece, right? Now what's weird about it is before I do any jewelry or anything, I, have, I find a lot of pieces that I have at the house. I lay it on the table and I let it speak to me. So I, I kind of, like I said, I go back to that meditation of, you know what, I'm going to do this necklace. So before I start gluing everything, I kind of put it together, like, you know, just do a practice set. Then I say, okay, that looks kind of good. I'll send a picture to Siobhan to just get her idea about it. Or even other people. I've been doing that on Facebook. I always use other people for the audience to try to get their opinion on it. Um, a lot of times, the results is positive, but I look for the negative sometimes because that makes me work harder. You know what I'm saying? And it's the truth. But anyway, with this piece, I got seven pieces. So you got two pieces. This is an earring. You got the two earrings right here. Um, this is um, an ivory elephant. I went to the store to get the skin. And um, this piece right here, the round piece, is a toy. From like a toy, you know, it's a toy. And then the plane was a necklace. I, had, I just put it all together and there it is. Yeah, and I did a watch like that too. So. You know, so what I do too, and a lot of times people be like, how do you sell it? So use our wear and the people buy right off my neck. So I remember doing, last year I did a couple pieces and I sold it for about, I got about a thousand dollar worth, yeah, I sold a thousand dollar worth of jewelry. That um, I, it was very cheap while I was in the material. So I was winning. So there it is, thank you. So um, many long years ago, uh, I had someone in my life who was a photographer, and and you know I have a little point and shoot digital camera, and and I take pictures. So does that make me a photographer? I mean, am I a photographer? Well, it turns out that this person who really was a professional photographer said to me. There are snapshots, there are photographs, and then there is art made with camera. And you kind of referenced a little bit to that earlier, Jay, about wanting to use your camera in more of an artistic way. And, and it really made me think and, <clears throat> about uh, the different mo uh, modes of <clears throat> how different uh, uh, media are used. Um, Omar, I'm going to put you on the spot because I know for you, photography is that, the art of using a camera to make art. And, and you can dispute that if you want because, you know, you can, but I, I don't think so. But so talk about that a little bit, about what does that what, what is that for you, and, and what is it you're doing with your camera when you're, yeah, making art? Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. That's a difficult question. Um, of course, thank you. I think one of the difficulties with photography is that it's very technological and it's tied to machinery. And one of the problems that you inherit as a photographer in the history of photography is that there is a history where people think that the machine is responsible for the actual art. And so when you say something like, <clears throat> if I have a camera and I'm a photographer, I would say yes, if you have a Steinway piano, you're also a concert pianist. It's a question of perspective, right? What do, you, what do you do with it? I mean, a piano has 88 keys. Can you play them? You know, 
uh, and you can say the same thing about a camera also. Uh, I try, as any other artist does, to make the process as transparent as possible so that the camera sort of disappears. And I think that's what most of us try to do. I, I don't like to, I'm not a gearhead. Everybody who knows me will, will, tell, will tell you this, even though I have an awful lot of gear. I don't talk about it. I don't talk about that any more than I talk about my triple lot staplers or my rapidographs or, or which way I lay zip -a tone because it's not that important. What's important is for me, um, pictures kind of take one of two artistic pictures, whatever that means, take sort of two forms. They're either windows that you look out through where the personality of the photographer is more or less transparent or they're mirrors where what you are seeing in the picture is actually a reflection of some aspect of the photographer's own personality. I go back and forth between those and uh, also I do an awful lot of commercial work with my camera so I have that influence also. And the question always becomes what do you want to communicate? And I don't think I ever know that when I have my camera out of my hand. It's very rare. Um, I have to organize my own thoughts as a photographer in long projects. Otherwise, it's too easy to wander, and it's too easy to try to put together greatest hits of your, of your pictures, as we all do. And that's not how artists in other media work. Artists in other media try to focus on developing an idea fairly consistently. And I try to do the same thing. Going way, way back to the question of why do you choose one medium over another, I have straight prints in here, I have a print on metal, and then I have a print on canvas. What was I trying to accomplish by doing that? Well, the one that's on canvas, I didn't feel like it could be on anything else. I tried printing it on paper and it sucked. I tried printing it four or five other ways and it just did not look right. What I noticed about it was what I was capturing in that was a very soft, light striking a really hard geometry and I needed a range that you only get out of canvas you can't get that range in paper and so that was the thing that called me uh, <clears throat> did I know that when I took the picture probably not did I know that when I saw the dark room yeah that's when it started to hit me I think photography more than other arts is about taking a chance and you kind of look really quickly and you try to look as deeply as possible in that moment and you go well maybe this will work and you just go bang um, <clears throat> but of course it's the training that you have to get to that point where you actually see something clearly enough to get the bang that separates you know the professional from the amateur in that sense and you know, as my teacher Freeman Patterson used to say the only difference between a professional and an amateur is a professional throws away twice as many pictures because you know when things will or will not work and you just don't you just don't go down that path the more th mistakes you make the more creative mistakes you make and presumably that gets you closer to saying whatever it is that's in your head because you you will know from the sum of your mistakes where your artistic vision is in a sense sure so when you all were preparing for this exhibit Omar just referenced throwing away lots of images, right? So my guess is that you all had lots of pieces of work that you could have brought into this exhibit. Why did you choose the ones you chose? What was it about them? What was the truth that you thought was underneath that that you really wanted to make sure everybody got? I volunteered. <laughs> um, Actually, the pieces that I chose were pieces that other folks really liked. They liked others as well, but you know, it was multiple people liked these pieces, and I also liked them a lot too. So that was um, the the decision helped me make my decision. And uh, in fact, one of the pieces uh, it's called "In Her Zone" was created inspired by another piece called A Time to Blossom. And um, someone wanted to buy it once, and I was like, no, I can't sell it. I, I, 
it means too much to me, I'm not ready to let it go. So someone gave me the idea, we'll try to create something similar. Uh, so I tried to do that and then I was inspired to create an, another piece. So yeah, I, I like to, the very first exhibit that I did last summer, I asked Al Doggett to um, help me select the pieces to put in the exhibit. Because sometimes as an artist, it's kind of, well, at least for me, it's kind of hard to be um, subjective or objective. And you know, everything may not be the best fit, so I asked someone to kind of help me do that. And, and so I used my friends to help me decide these two. Two in a row. I chose four pieces that were, for me, deliberately conservative, I would say. Um, I did that because primarily it's a group show and I didn't want to stick outside of the group as far as the thematic material went. I'm always going to stick out in a group and I'm not worried about that aspect of it. You know, I'm not, everybody's going to know that I made a photograph because my name is right under it. So that's not a problem, but uh, I thought very much about meshing with the other artists who would be in the who would be in the show. Had it been a solo show, I would be more concentrated upon where I was at my particular stage of development as an artist. When I chose for this show, I wanted to choose things that I knew were solid, that were accomplished, and that represented me as an artist among the other artists very fairly. So when they explained it to me, I really, I was cool with that. I was all right with that because I know when I go home and do another project that um, I could do something that people just want to like. But the main thing I'm saying is it don't matter if people like your work or not. As long as you like it and you did it honestly, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? I just want to add, um, with that particular piece of lady in my in Las Vegas. What I like about it, we worked on it together, number one, but it also surprised me because I just had sketched that piece. Me and Julius had already made maybe one or two paintings together, and then um, we were going to do another one, and I literally sketched that out in like, I don't know, less than 10 minutes. Like, I had no, I could, 
at the time, I did it so, made it so fast. I was just like, well, let me make something. And I didn't have any other thought beyond that. I just wrote, drew it with the pencil, ran over it with the marker, and I gave it to Julius with no concept of what he was going to do. And so when he brought it back to me with the jewelry on it and saying that it was going to be, you know, kind of a Las Vegas theme, and I was like, oh, I can totally see that, you know. So it kind of opened up my eyes to the possibilities of what can be done with that piece, because I still had more to do after he gave it to me. I still went over with some more paint, added some more jewelry, and added some more kind of sparkle to it. And, and then when I looked at some images of the Las Vegas at nighttime, and I was like, oh yes, this really does kind of resemble that, that atmosphere. So that particular piece was a process. It, it took um, um, at least three or four months to get done with me, with me having it at first, giving it to him, giving it back, and you, you know, so it was a, that particular piece was on its own little journey to be completed. And, um, you know, it's one of those pieces where I feel like it really reflects the theme or the title, and so um, that's why it's here. Mm -hmm. If you would have asked me to guess what the theme was, never in a million years could I have told you it was true. Told you, uh, you know, that the theme is more for the artist, perhaps, than for people coming to the show, and that's fine. Uh, there's just an incredible amount of diversity in this community, and that's what strikes me you know, almost immediately. Questions? Yeah. So Ernie, I have a question for you because you are the um, you're the the abstract artist who's sitting here right now. I think we have another one, other than Umar, who wanders into that direction. Okay, good. So here's my question for those of you who do the abstract: um, What is your what goes on inside your head that <laughs> creates that? How, how do you, I mean, it's, you know, it's one thing to take something literal and create something literal, but what are you doing when you create something abstract? Is it, uh, is it mental? Is it emotional? Is it, you know, how, how do we know when we call, when we need to call for help for you? I mean, you know, <laughs> tr truth be told. <laughs> tell, tell us about it. Being an abstract artist, well, you know, it's kind of like uh, somebody mentioned earlier. Something found you. You know, the art is okay. I've been asked, hey, who influences you? Who assessor whose artwork you, you really like? And the answer is yes. I like a lot of art artists' artwork. But when it has come down to me, it's, it's like, um, it's, it's not that I'm looking to do something very specific. It's, 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 I'm being spoken to, kind of. You know, hey, here, here is something. Now do something else that would be interesting. And then once you start, the process kind of takes its own life and you end, you know, you start and you end and then my starts and endings always end up being mostly abstract. <laughs> Although I've done, I've done figurative and some people have seen it, like it, but I haven't felt it. You know, so, but the abstract is something that speaks to me and and I feel. Oh. The Jesus piece. I just want to hear what inspired you. Well, okay. So I, I had this. Uh, religions in general are um, 
very thought provoking. You know, I was raised in a, in a Christian family, uh, raised believing in Jesus Christ, you know, and uh, one Easter, I have this piece of stainless steel leaning, leaning against the wall, so I had the uh, motivation to pick it up and in my wondering how Christ's head would have fallen and then how that weight and the weight of his body would, would be repositioned and, and so on, uh, I, I began to fashion the, the piece based on the crucifixes I had seen previously. And uh, so I already had some of the, the stuff, I had some of the textured wallpaper, I had the wood, so I cut the cross out and uh, put the piece up from, for the crown of thorns made uh, use some aluminum wire and uh, it, it just kind of opened itself up. <laughs> and uh, and I, I've seen that piece render people quiet. You know, and so to me, the speak the piece speaks. You know, what can I say? Say, now, did I answer that question? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, but but abstract. Um, I don't know. I guess that's kind of where my head is. I'm, I'm in the abstract realm. <laughs> you know, don't 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 take me away. <laughs> Real quick, does that reach? Oh, I'm always so surprised that it reads. Um, because I love to paint, because I love paint, because I love a brush, because I love the feel of paint on a brush, on a canvas, the smoothness of it, it's all about feeling. And Composition is in there because um, it's not. I just can't. I, I was commissioned once to do a Jackson Pollock. Oh, sorry, Jackson Pollock, and that was hard. It was really hard. So what I've learned, abstract is very difficult. Um, a lot of people think it's just uh, you throw something or you, know, you add something or you, you know. Just do a line. Uh, it's done. <laughs> it's it's not. It's I think it for me it's it goes into my soul to do abstract. It's a, one of the deepest because you don't have an outcome. I have a slightly different problem coming to abstraction from photography because photography at its basis is largely realistic and people expect it to be realistic and always represent something that's out in the world. Um, of course anybody who's seen my work knows that that's not what I'm interested in, but I'm not interested in that one because it's too obvious and two, because it's not particularly interesting as a conversation piece. When I, <clears throat> you all have had this experience when somebody comes up and stands in front of one of your works and goes, so what is this, yeah. right? We've all had this. The problem as a photographer is that if you tell them, they will look at it and about three seconds later, they'll look at your name tag and then they'll walk away. Because you've solved all the mystery that they had. All that most people are looking for in a photograph is a realistic confirmation of a prejudice. And they're not looking for things that are going to poke them deliberately and make them look at things differently. Those are very, very rare people who go out looking for that. And so as a photographer, my job is to arrest them in a sense, and make them stop and make them look at something. And the more you understand the underlying patterns of things and the way that things look structurally, the easier it is to make one pattern look like another pattern look like another pattern. And so you can keep people guessing. 
in a sense, and it makes people look, well, it looks kind of like people skiing down the mountain. Well, it looks kind of like leaves. Well, it looks kind of like something that I saw under a microscope once, all three of which are true. And it is actually all three of those things because it is the structure that ties those things together. And pushing toward the abstraction and revealing that structure without sort of the crutch of the, of the representational is a way to make people think beyond labels. And that's, for me, the purpose of, it's the purpose of all art, but particularly in photography, where it's difficult to accomplish. Um, it goes back to Monet's thing, which is, you know, seeing means to forget the name of the thing seen. And that's also why I go abstract. I go abstract because I don't want people concentrating on, well, you know, this is a piece of metal and it's like four feet long and it's kind of brushed. It's like, yeah, it is, but it's also something else. And that's the other question that I think abstract art moves you toward. It's like, well, it's this, but what else is it? Which is a question I think is endlessly fascinating. Is, isn't there uh, importance to knowing, you know, knowing how one came to this, if it could be explained, you know, and, and I guess I'm, I'm asking a question from the perspective of potential buyer. Well, some of Omar's stuff does run counter to truth be told. <laughs> <laughs> Different level of truth. Right, it's sort of truth. <laughs> truth for me in this exhibit, most important was, I get really, really tired of black essentialism, where people think, well, if you're an African American artist, you must paint distorted figures. You must use, you must use paint straight out of the tube. You know, we all know the cliches, but if you look at even half of the artists that I know, none of them do that. And, and so it was a matter of proof to walk through an exhibit like this and see actually there is no one African American style. You know, and for a change, us black folks actually get to be anonymous, which is really nice. We don't have to speak for the entire race or that kind of crap, right? Like we get asked to whenever there are white folks around. You know, and when you see that there is this diversity of things that come from African, you know, African descended artists, it makes people reconsider what truth they tell about what African American art is, which for me is entirely the essence of, of this exhibit. So to answer Ernie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prod him. I'm going to say, would you rather, as, as a buyer, would you rather have a piece that you look at once and understand, or would you rather have a piece that you don't understand, but you look at every single day? And I'm not even going to answer that for you, because I know the answer. <laughs> one of the things I really love about this group and is that especially when we are down at Gallery Onyx down on, on First and Wall, this kind of conversation happens every weekend, right? Where we have a group of artists talking to each other this way. And you know for me, and I want to follow up on what you just said Omar, for me this exhibit, just like the gallery, is Thanksgiving. And, and what I mean by that is um, there is uh, that one cousin who wants to talk about sports, and that's all they want to talk about. There is another cousin who wants to uh, sell you something, right? There is uh, your, uh, your auntie who is cooking and is all about food, and that's what, your, that's what her focus is. You want to talk to her, you got to go in the kitchen, right? And and there's and there's always the crazy crazy drunk uncle or aunt. I mean, there just is in every family, right? And and so when I look at the art here, what I love so much about it is exactly what you said, Omar. It it is Thanksgiving. It is our family, 
and our family does not have a single style. No family does. I mean, families have little ribbons of things that run through them, but families always also have those individuals who run counter to the family. Um, so it, what's exciting for me about this exhibit is the differences in style, the differences in media, the differences in voice, the differences in scale, the differences in material, everything. Experience. Experience. And that, and that when he said, tell your truth be told, it was not one single story. That's the truth that we're telling, is that our story, our truths are multiple. And I find that so exciting and powerful. Um, so, you know, I, I, I know we've gone on for a while, so I wanna, I wanna wrap up. I uh, wanna remind everybody that next Saturday was supposed to be our closing, but truth be told, we got extended for a couple more weeks. So, <clears throat> instead of having a closing reception, we're actually going to be having a, um, uh, 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 an extension celebration, <laughs> all right? And part of that is we have a couple of writers here from the African American Writers Alliance. They're actually here to look at some of the art, write pieces in response, write poetry in particular in response to the art, and they'll be reading that at the, at the um, extension celebration. We also will have Northwest Tap Connection who will be here to perform for us uh, and with us. So, uh, yes? So, at the closing reception, are we going to read again or just next week? Just next week. And there's food. And there, oh yes, and there's food and, and all kinds of good stuff. Um, a re it's a reception. They have to have food. <laughs> I mean, okay, we are black folks, okay? It's not like really crazy. There has to be food. Um, <laughs> There will be food, and there will be music, and there will be dance, and there will be words. Come on. Thanksgiving, right? So thank you all so much. Thanks to the artists who uh, participated uh, and, and who have been part of this exhibit. Um, this is just my happy place. Thank you all so much. All right? Have a great rest of the afternoon, and tell your friends. <laughs> thank you.